So we are starting the second week of the program. It's a focus week. Uh, there will be a series of lectures this week. So before we start with Vasily, there is one important announcement that tomorrow we will have a welcome drink in Galilea House. So right after the lecture, uh, we will meet right I mean, here. Yeah, and yeah. then all of us will move there. Then we will see the house and then we will drink something. But it is the actual Galilea House. And uh, so now it's a pleasure to have Vasily Gaston who will tell us something about localization, right? Okay, uh, there is it's Italian raise high quality it's in this Uh, so, yeah, so I was asked uh, to give uh, some introductory lectures about uh, what is known as supersymmetric localization in physics, and in mathematics is known as the equivariant homology. Well, in, in physics, there's also covariant homology or applied to infinite dimensional geometries, like to the spaces of the path integrals or which we integrate. But uh, as we want to get um, intuition about uh, this, uh, uh, this subject, and uh, as uh, uh, I want to give some elementary introduction, we'll actually start from some simple uh, definitions and uh, from uh, uh, very simple finite dim dimensional geometry and the definitions of the equivalent homology and some uh, localization theories in mathematics like Matthias uh, about the localization formula and so on, and then we'll gradually develop to the path integral and the quantum field theories. Uh, okay. And uh, so the beginning probably would be elementary if it's not if if, if, if something not clear. Uh, you are always welcome to ask uh, questions. I want to the first points to be uh, where to go. So okay, so let me start from uh, the concepts of uh, equivalent homology of the manifolds. So. That was developed um, in works by Cartan and other mathematicians one half century ago. So the situation is the following. Suppose that uh, you have some manifold M. So I'm being manifold. And suppose that, that we have a group G which acts on M. And you assume that G is a compact liquid. Okay. 
Now, so what if we were a cohomology? So what G if we were a cohomology on M is trying to compute is essentially a cohomology of the space of the quotient space. So we're interested in the cohomology of the quotient space M factor G. So the situation would be simple if G acts freely if G acts freely on M so that there are no fixed points then we can uh, then this quotient is a good space, is a good smooth manifold and then we just uh, define the equivalent homology I will denote them with the uh, sub uh, index G equivalent homology of G on M would be equal to the ordinary cohomology of M portion G. But what we shall do if uh, the action is not free? If there are some uh, fixed points, then this quotient is not well defined. For example, if you take uh, just R2, and let's say that U1 acts on R2 in the usual way by rotation, then the quotient R2 mod S1, just like, you know, just like array. But the pre image of this point is point, and the pre image of a lot of points is circle. So something, something is different with this point and the array ends here. So if you would uh, try to compute one more in the ordinary way, you would miss some information. So, a covariant homology tries to uh, capture all, all the relevant uh, physics or geometry of those orbits which are not ordinary orbits by doing computations right in the space M rather than the quotient space. Well, 
in differential force mechanics. You can say the other way around. Differential force on M will get in uh, the functions on uh, <coughs> the Lyell diversion. Uh, if these functions are polynomial functions, then one can formally take that. Uh, one can formally say that the complex that we consider is the space of differential force on M, and the all symmetrical powers of the dual of the Lyell diversion. Since uh, this space is uh, uh, <coughs> generates, well, the elements of the space are coordinates in the Lyell algebra, and if you take the symmetrical powers to those coordinates, it's like we consider polynomials of the Lyell algebra. So let me, let's say that uh, in the basis T8, so that the basis of G, let's say that epsilon A would be coordinates. That will be coordinates on G in this basis. So an element, so if you take some element, that's called that's called H. An element H in the algebra can be expanded over the basis in the coordinates. So but to put the index downstairs for the basis and upstairs for the coordinates, so it's the steps from A to A. So the complex in this the, the complex for the Cartan model of Korean cosmologists in this uh, uh, in, in these notations are just differential forms in the manifold M, which are also functions of epsilon. <laughs> Now we shall modify the differential and the differential D, the equivalent differential, is the usual Cartan differential, is the usual Dirac differential, minus the following operation. We take, uh, we take the sum of our all vector fields generated by the basic uh, elements in the algebra, and let's call we call them. IDK. The contraction with the vector field in the differential form reduces the degree of the form by one. And then I we'll multiply that by the element epsilon A to the dual of the algebra. <coughs> so this differential <coughs> is called <coughs> Cartan differential or differential of the Cartan. Now, to define cohomology, we would need to have a complex and also we would need to have a good uh, gradient and we would need to have that uh, d squares to zero. So first of all, to have a good notion of gradient, let's assign, let's assign to epsilon a degree 2. Then we see what happens. The, sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't understand how it works with similar terms of your DG. How it works? Yes, yeah, yeah, so how it works with respect to this differential complex. Right. Okay. Right. So how it works? Okay. okay. Yeah. So so D is the Dirac differential, and it just takes external derivative on this vector. Okay. Now, epsilon a is just multiplication by one of the coordinates on the Lie algebra epsilon a uh, times the value of this operation. So what is this operation? This operation IVA, this is IVA is contraction with vector field contraction with the vector field VA, where VA is the vector field generated by the basis element TA. So it acts on the Lorentz phase. Yes, it depends on this factor. 
So it decreases. The it decreases, right? It decreases the degree of the differential form by one. So your differential Gaussian does not it increase and decrease. Right. It, it, uh, this it's the, not the Durand uh, differential. Right? So this part uh, increases the degree of the okay. differential form by one, and this part decreases the degree of the differential form by one. Okay. But what we are trying, right, in the second to do is to assign a proper grading to all components in this formula to have a good notion of degree on the space. And for that, what I want to, uh, what I want to uh, define is to assign to epsilon, to this element, the degree 2. Okay. And you see what happens if you assign to epsilon the degree 2 and we will uh, then compute the grading uh, using this uh, notion of degree, then when uh, this operation decreases the degree of the differential form by 1, but it also multiplies it by epsilon, and so as a result, this operation increases the gradient in these notions by 1. Okay, so we are assigned to epsilon the degree 2, uh, and then we can see that d has degree 1. The contraction in the vector field is degree minus 1, And then it's so consistent that the degree of the Cartan differential is 1. Okay? And, sorry, there is X only on the wrong space. So, no, uh, the dual algebra is not concerned with uh, this operation. So this operation acts on the Dirac space, yes. yes, but then it also is multiplied by epsilon a, and then epsilon a just adds the factor. Okay. Okay. Other questions?
the, sorry, the, the action on the Liadra is trivial or? Uh, sorry, the action of the algebra is trivial of what? Well, you since you define the G invariant uh, part of the complex, the action of G on the Lie algebra, is it trivial? Or uh, well, or it, it's, it's trivial if the algebra is a if it's not, oh. if it's general the algebra, that's by a joint representation. Sure. It, 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 it acts naturally by the joint. So, at LBA, it's like it's on the what is the LDA? No, LDA doesn't act on the algebra part. So LDA is the linear derivative along the vector field B. And just by the definition, uh, the linear derivative is D by B plus I B the usual definition of the differential geometry. It's not clear that d squared to zero is in balance with it. It's not clear that it's uh, squared to zero on the invariant part. Because g also acts on c of g. Well, the, the, okay, no, that's the, just what that means. That the, you, you, you define the invariant uh, forms here as uh, those forms which are healed by, by this operation. So then should we just take the trivial action on the algebra, not the other one? Well, 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 So in case if G is an abelian 
uh, group, let, let, let's say, for example, let's say that the would be just U1, and let's say that epsilon is a coordinate on the center of the algebra of U1, since uh, U1 makes, uh, since U1 commutes with itself, all uh, joint invariant functions on this leaf algebra of U1, which is just R, would be any functions in R. So in this case, the cohomology, the covariant U1 cohomology of the point is just the space of all functions of R. The coordinate on the star is denoted by S. Well, the usual definitions one requires this to be polynomial, but as uh, we want to be more generic, at this point we will allow um, all kinds of things. Now, now, let's come to the integration and the uh, localization. There were some generalities at first. So I usually jump to think about integration. So you say, suppose that you have two manifolds, X and Y are compact manifolds. So if you, if, you, if you have your manifold represented 
uh, by uh, some cellular or singular complex, then you can define the push forward operation which takes uh, some chain from one manifold from the, from the source and computes its image in the target. Yes. So then the push forward operation acts on the homologies in this case, naturally. It acts on the, on the arguments, actually. I mean, the push forward acts on vector fields from the manifold X to Y, and that's why we can induce uh, a push forward on the cohomological space, cohomology class. Is that it? You, you can induce push forward uh, in, this, um, in this argument on the, the cohomologies in the case when you have one regularity between homology and cohomology. Okay. Because naturally, as you said, it adds some vectors and also it's, uh, it adds some chains, it adds like on the structures in the manifold, not on the dual structures. It adds not Normal push forward acts not on the differential course, but on not on the dual structures, but on the structures of manifolds itself, like vectors or chains there. So it naturally gives you an operation on the homologies, which sends homology of the manifold X to the target Y. But when we, when we have one graduality between homology and cohomology, we can use that and define then the push forward operation of the cohomology. So, uh, let me give you some examples of this push-forward operation, the natural examples. Examples of push-forward. From X to Y. So uh, what can we do? For example, we can take, uh, for example, we can take the map F to be just trivial map from manifold X to the manifold Y, which is taken to be point. So in this case, the push-forward operation is just integration. <coughs> so if you have uh, some homology plus alpha, you integrate it over the space x, and that's the image. The cohomology, it's just integration of the space that gives you an upper and that's another uh, map of the homology of the point, which is zero. Okay, so well, that the last trivial example is again integration, but now let's take a family. So let's take a vector bundle. E over S. So now, in this case, X would be the base. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It, it, it's better to, to to use notations. Okay, let's just take X to Y. So vector bundle X to Y, but X is the total space, and Y is the base. And this is projection map. Sorry, F is projection map. Which projects fibers of the vector bundle to the points on the base. Okay. So, again, you can define the push forward operation on the cohomologies of the total space of the vector bundle to the cohomologies on the base. You may ask, oh, well, when we try to define them, we use the argument that uh, x and y are compact manifolds, but in this case, as x is the total space of the vector bundle, it's not compact. So what shall we do? We shall uh, refine our definitions a little bit, and instead of considering just the alternative cohomology in the space x, we can consider co what is called cohomology is compact support. So on, on, on space x, 
which are considered cohomology is complex support, which means that in the vertical directions, so this is the base y, and this some the, the vertical fiber of the vertical bundle of x, and we request in the definition of the cohomology is complex support that well the support would be finite in this vertical direction that uh, the differential force which I used to define that in the general definition just identical range at some point when you go to infinity and, and then again there is a point variability and one can define push forward so in this case in, when there is such projection like from the vector bundle to its base then you have the push forward operation from the cohomologies of complex support on the total space of the vector bundle to the cohomologies on the base and concretely you can construct this operation by just integrating a given differential for representing such cohomology class over the fiber over the vertical fiber and then gives you just some form defined on the base and one can check with uh, the Durant differential and show it uh, then one can check that this induces the uh, map on the cohomology. Okay. So, moreover, moreover, one can check that uh, in this situation, this uh, map actually induces isomorphism, and it's called Tom isomorphism. between the cohomologies with the compact support on the total space of the vector bundles let's say that the rank of the vector bundle is R and you see when we integrate over the fiber of the dimension R we reduce the dimension of the cohomology, the degree of cohomology by R so you would have isomorphism between the cohomologies of some rank plus R on the space X and the cohomologies of the rank on the space Y and if you want to go in one direction you just integrate over the fiber and if you want to in another direction then we would need to have some generator of the degree R which would convert the cohomology from the base to the cohomology of the fiber and the generator is called Tom class. <coughs> so, can, can, you, can you repeat how, how you determine R? How do I determine R? Right. So, here, as I said, the this map to push forward from the cohomology on the total space X to the cohomology on the base Y is computed by integrating the differential form over the fiber. Let's say that the vector bundle is the vector bundle of rank R. So R is the dimension of the fiber. And when we integrate it, then we have the change in R of the degrees of the differential. Other questions? So, okay, so in one direction, to have this isomorphism, we integrate all the fiber, and in another direction, what shall we do if you are given a cohomology class on the base y? How do we compute uh, its preimage on the uh, total space? So, this is done with something which is called Tom class of the vector bundle S. And that's an element of the cohomology is compact support of the total space and roughly so this is the base and this is the fiber so roughly you can visualize that the uh, tone class is essentially like the volume form or you can take the 
volume for maybe to have some um, Gaussian like shape. It's actually called the uh, microequivalent representative of this uh, Tom class. So it has uh, the vertical directions, the differential form has vertical directions, and it's like um, a volume uh, form of a finite volume one in the vertical directions. So that uh, when you uh, when you when you multiply the form by some trivial element from the chromosome of the bits, for example, one, you get uh, an, a differential form of degree r, whose uh, essential uh, uh, directions are vertical. And when and if you then go in opposite direction from x to y, and if you integrate the volume form of the vertical space, you get one at each point on the box, so, so that uh, it works like isomorphism. So that's uh, the intuitive picture about the form. Uh, yeah. How can the body forms they have compact support? Right. Well, so that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it's, it's, it's roughly... Well, it's not really a volume form. It's not really a volume form in uh, the ordinary sense, which is a okay. constant over there. But it's just defined as the form which 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 okay. has integrated to one. Which integrates to one. Right. Okay. So we want the integral of the fiber to be one when we go from x to y, integrating over fiber. Okay. And if you if you actually take the profile of this form to be Gaussian, uh, then uh, one called one type Newton. Multi-equivalent construction, multi-equivalent representative of that of the, the Tom class. And that's what naturally uh, one sees in uh, topological or cosmological field theories. This is an observation by uh, the paper of IT and Jeffrey after all the other works of Wheaton on topological field theories. Okay, let's summarize at this point. This is important. So we have this map from the total space to the base, and in this direction we just integrate over the fiber. And in this direction we multiply by the top class. Five I probably want to take now roughly decrease instead of compact. If you want to use a Gaussian. Uh, if you want to, uh, yes, that's right. So here I didn't differentiate between Gauss and, and but 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 right. So compact uh, cohomology, this compact support is isomorphic to the cohomology is sufficiently fast yeah. decay, like exponential. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's, that's right. Uh, Okay, so that's how the maps, that's how Tom isomorphism works. In both directions. And now here is uh, the second important definition, it is uh, of the Euler class. The Euler class of the vector bundle of x to y. So the Euler class is an element of the cohomology of the base. So the class of this element is in the cohomology of the base, and we can <coughs> define it and maybe and we can check that this pure to standard definition with some other definitions or uh, other way around. But anyways, the important property that this Euler class satisfies is that if you take that uh, Tom class that is used to construct this isomorphism to go from this direction to this direction, and then Restrict that uh, Tom class, uh, sorry, that, uh, yeah, if you restrict the Tom class uh, to some 
a section of this vector bundle. Well, since, since this is a vector bundle, we can always just uh, take the trivial section, the zero section, and we can restrict the differential form to the zero section. In other words, we can consider. You see, when you have with the vector bundle, then there is this projection map, but also there is an inclusion map. So the base y is naturally included to the total space x for vector bundles by a section. section always exist as you can take just zero section. So the point is that if you take the pullback by this zero section or well, any section of the Tom class which is defined here, you get the error class of the vector bond of X, which is an element or the cohomologies in the base. And you can take this as a definition of the error class. Let me give you an example. So suppose that the vector bond of X is tangent bound to the manifold Y. And uh, well, before I give this example, I probably should. Uh, Give this an envelope. I will give this example later. Let me at this point illustrate, uh, or explain what this example I want to illustrate is this one. So, suppose that we have uh, taken the matic wheel representative. like the Gaussian like form in the vertical directions centered around the zero section of the vector bundle such that if you integrate it uh, over vertical directions you can uh, you, you get one and you can take the size of the Gaussian like distribution of the vertical directions to be arbitrarily small so you can you can visualize it in the limit as delta function, something is still function differential form, volume form and logical directions, which is supported on the zero section. Okay. Now let's see uh, what do we get as a toolback. Okay, now let's take some arbitrary section here, not necessarily zero section. And we take the toolback by the zero section of the tom form. So you see, at those points in the manifold y on the base where the section is not zero, the pullback gives you zero because the representative of the tom class vanishes. It, it, it decreases very fast, exponential forces, and if you are far away from uh, the base manifold in the vertical direction, the pullback is just zero. But it's not zero at the points where the section is zero. Okay? So let's take the simple situation where, now let's take this example, where actually uh, the rank of the vector bundle x is equal to the dimension of the base. So that the dimension of the fiber and the dimension of the base agree. So in this case, uh, for a generic um, section, 
the zeros would be zero dimensional manifold, so the points. So zeros on section S are just points. So the pullback of the tone class by section S is supported on a collection of points on the zeros of the uh, on the zeros of the circuit, so, so, section S. And those points also are taken with orientation since uh, well I didn't say that, but okay, let's say that we consider oriented manifold Y and oriented uh, vector bundle X. And since there is an orientation on the fiber and there is orientation on the Ways when we uh, take the pullback of that uh, thing, then we get plus or minus one depending on the orientation of uh, this little form when we pull it back to the base. So, uh, so in, the, in this case, you see that the vector class would be the top degree differential form on the base, which is supported on a number of points on the base, which are zeros of the third section X. So if you then integrate, then you get the Poincaré uh, theorem that you, if you integrate the Euler class of some bundle x over the base y, you can compute it by taking the sum of the zeros of section. Y of plus minus one, and those plus minus ones, the sign depends on the orientation uh, when you <coughs> consider the behavior of the section in the neighborhood uh, of, uh, of its zero. Like uh, the index of that zero of the section, it's called the index. You say near in section, sorry, near, near in zero, a section can be approximated by linear dependence on the coordinates, and then you have a square matrix because we are assumed that the dimension of the fiber and the dimension of the base is the same, and for that square matrix you can compute the uh, eigenvalue of the determinant, and then uh, that would be just uh, the determinant of uh, uh, for the <coughs> So in local coordinates, you would have that uh, some xi is some matrix, Big or G, and uh, the index would be the sign of the determinant of the matrix set. Now, on the other hand, we could take a different section. We could uh, take just zero section. And what do, we, what, what do we have if you take the zero section? Well, if you have the zero section, then uh, the pullback of the tone class by the zero section, if we take this specific multiple representative of the tone class, uh, turns out to be differential form which has non-zero support everywhere, and that non-zero support is actually the differential geometrical definition of the Euler class. It's given by the Pfeffian of the curvature of this vector bundle. So if, if S is just zero section and you take the pullback by the zero section of the bond class, you find, um, well, you literally find the differential form Pfeffian of the curvature the vector bundle has uh, differential geometrical definition of the curve uh, class. And uh, essentially, like using this uh, tone class construction, you uh, get for free the theorem that the integral of the, of the curvature is equal to the sum of the indices of a vector field uh, of the tension tone class. So, like for if y is S2 and x is the tangent bundle to y, 
then you see that the integral of the uh, curvature, which is just uh, 1 over 2 pi, uh, times the natural volume form, which is here, uh, will give you 2, because the, the surface area is 4 pi, so it, it gives you 2 on the one hand, because that was the curvature form, and on the other hand, you can take it as a sum of indices of the vector field, and let's say for the vector field, just the rotation of the sphere, Actually, the symbol uh, picture will uh, appear again and again in this uh, lecture, so it's just a simple example. And uh, that's the sum over the two fixed points, or zeros of the vector field. So in this sum, there is a contribution from the north and the south pole. And uh, so it will be zeros over of your one vector field. Uh, of the indices, of the indices of, uh, of those zeros, and that's just one plus one, and this two, because in this case uh, you see that uh, the, the index uh, for the rotational uh, pressure field is uh, just one. Okay. Now. Now let me get to the localization formula of a TM bot. So suppose that now we have the manifold X, and let's say that X is acted by a compact the group G. Uh, actually, it's good at this point to change notation for the following, and let me call now the uh, group for the equivalent homologous T. So X is uh, acted by T, and that's a compact the group. Let's suppose that uh, the section has a discrete set of fixed points. Which are which are which are local pair. Just some subset of pairs. Now, in the definitions of the Earl class or of the uh, Tom class and uh, in all the previous uh, reasonings that we have seen about Fulbach and Pushpor, one can repeat everything literally with <coughs> the word equivalent. So one can do also the, all the constructions that we have seen with you. 
uh, when the uh, definitions are taken favorably with respect to some uh, action uh, group of the manifold. So one has a notion of the error class, of the equivalent error class, and uh, so on. So I will, I will give you the definitions in terms of the uh, differential forms, uh, perhaps in the next lecture, of the equivalent uh, classes, like equivalent error class, chart class, and so on. But let me, I, I have one, uh, uh, I, I finish it also, right? Right, right. right. So, so let me by, by just the end of this lecture, uh, formulate, just formulate uh, the idea of what uh, the theorem and then we will uh, expand it. Uh, okay, so, So the theorem is the following. Suppose that you have uh, a form alpha, which is called some representative of the equivariant T cohomology on the space X. And you want to integrate alpha over X. And this is equivalent this is the same thing as to say that you want to compute the uh, push forward by the projection map. So let's say the P is just the stupid map which sends the manifold text to the point, and we can consider the push forward by this uh, projection map of the form alpha. Maybe in modern notations is physical kind of is the just integration of alpha over the space. And now the idea of localization formula says that uh, this can be computed just by looking at the fixed points of the action of T on the space X. So this is the sum over the fixed points F in the set of fixed points. Did I call it that? Yes, so F is a subset of X and F is the set of fixed points. Is the set of fixed points, XT. And here we have the restriction of the differential form, the current differential form alpha on each of the uh, fixed points and that restriction, let me call just alpha restricted to the point F, divided by the equivalent, equivalent error class, ET, of the normal bundle <coughs> to the point F. So, so actually this theorem is more general when the set of the fixed points are just, uh, uh, just points. It could be actually sub-manifolds. And what you have here is a, is a normal bundle to the sub-manifold F in the manifold X. That is what we want to talk about. This is normal one.